searching for relevant literature to back up your work is an exciting and sometimes messy process. But how do you know what you're finding is useful? Is it even accurate? Surely there must be some helpful tool that you can use to guide you along this critical process. Well, there is. In this video, we're going to talk about Prompt. Prompt was developed by the Open University and is one of many different structured approaches to critically evaluating the research that you find as you move through your research process. You might notice that PROMPT is written in all caps, and that's because it's an acronym. Let's go through each letter at a time. P is for presentation. Things to consider here are, is this information clear? Is the language right? Can you find what you need? Depending on your knowledge of your research area, making these judgments can be tricky. Information being clear is one thing, but judging language is another thing entirely. A good example here is to see if the language is formal, much like what you will have read in textbooks and lecture handouts throughout your course. If it is more conversational and chatty, it could be that this is more of an opinion piece and less a piece of peer-reviewed research. Depending on what you want to find, this may or may not fit your needs. R is for relevance. Does this information match your needs right now? Scan it quickly to get an overview. What is it mostly about? The information in front of you may be of the high quality that you're looking for, but not actually relevant to the question you're asking or to the scope of your search. Knowing what you're looking for is a key part of what your answer to this part of your critical evaluation might be. It could have some connected themes, but is a bit of a rabbit hole because while interesting, it goes off on a tangent away from what you need. It might not be based in the right part of the world that you're focusing on, or it might cover similar yet different species to what you're looking at. O is for objectivity. As with presentation, being aware of what is being shared within the thing you're looking at is important. Are there any hidden agendas, opinions, or is emotive language being used? Are you being sold a certain narrative because the research has been funded by a corporate body invested in a certain result? A good example of this is instances where certain cigarette manufacturers might fund investigations into lung cancer or certain oil companies invest in climate change developments. They might not all be bad, but to assume that there isn't any conflict of interest with the resulting research would mean you're not being critical. Many articles do state who the key funders of research are, and many researchers have information about who their funders are on their websites, so a bit of digging can help clear up any concerns or validate them. M is for method. A key part of any scientific research is the methodology. Things to look for here include, if statistical data is presented, what is this based on? Does the article include information on how data was gathered? And if samples were used, is the sample size representative enough to reflect any conclusions being made? Are the methods what you would expect to see in this kind of research? This might be hard to work out, but comparing methods with other articles about similar topics might flag up if something is unusual or novel. There could be a good reason for it, but being critically aware is still key here. The second P in prompt is for provenance. Is it clear who produced this information? Where does it come from? Whose opinions are these? If you've downloaded an article from a university subscription database, all of this information should be clearly presented. If you found something through Google, it might be a bit more cryptic. Do you trust this source of information? How you make this distinction is very subjective, but ideally, a peer-reviewed article in a reputable journal can often be trusted more over, say, a personal blog. But then that blog could be written by a leading academic in a certain field. Plus, some journal articles do get retracted due to errors. It is a minefield, but all you can do is the best with what you have in front of you and your own critical judgment. And finally, we have T for timeliness. More often than not, finding the most up-to-date literature is key when researching a topic unless you're doing a historical dive into an area of research. How recent something is will depend on many factors, including how new the field of research is, how active it is, or who is writing within it. The research process can take a long time, and the publishing process even longer, so something published a while ago could still be relevant, and something published recently could be superseded by other research. Many articles will give information on when something was submitted, and when it was accepted or published. The difference between these dates often reflect the sometimes slow process of peer review and publishing, so look for the most recent date to see when it was actually made available to the wider world. 
This is a good clue of how recent it is, as well as any dates that might suggest if it's been updated or corrected at all since publication. This does happen. A good way of using prompt is to have a grid with the prompt prompts down one side, then space to make notes for yourself. As you get more practice at using the prompt approach, you might not need this grid at all and will have these questions fresh in your mind as you look at new research with a critical eye. Either way, remember to ask questions. Who wrote it? Where did it come from? Is it any good? Good luck.